we have we have adductor to oblique, right? Now we could also take that and we could expand our we could expand our diagonal, could we not? We could take it from here to here. We could also take it right up to sh opposite shoulder. Okay. <coughs> Within the core subsystem, they only talk about this part of the X. <coughs> but I also like to think of the pec minor and the you know the pecs being part of that that whole line there, right? You got these fibers going this way, these fibers going this way, and you got the pec fibers going this way, right? So aren't they aren't those fibers all oriented in the same fashion? So pull your leg over towards the other one. Good. That's pretty darn strong. Turn this away. Cool. No problem with your abductors, right? Now let's test this guy. Now, let's get the psoas involved in this one too, right? That'd be part of these di diagonal fibers, right? Get this external oblique before we go to the pecs. So now we're going to have this knee go to this <coughs> shoulder, okay? On a diagonal, okay? You're going to lift this shoulder up a little bit, press up here, and pull your knee to your shoulder. Not too bad, right? A little bit of pain in here, but that's all right. Well, that's not all right. <laughs> <laughs> where was the pain? Right where he's hurting. <laughs> yeah. But that's not significant, right? All right, let's try that again, shall we? All right. Ready? Go. Are you holding your breath? Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, take a breath in and out now. Hold your mouth open. Yes, without his diaphragm working, that won't hold. We have a weakness in the external oblique test, and we have pain in the adductor. Okay? Do you want to touch that spot that gets really sore in here? We're close. All right, take your hand away. Okay, breath in and out, and do the same thing. Yeah, that, that, yeah. It's shaky, it gets weak without his hand on his abductor. Okay? So Marty is living proof of the anterior oblique subsystem. How about that? Yet another way to treat uh, a groin injury. Remember, we, we talked, I also talked to in the beginning class about oftentimes, you know, groin injury is a result of, uh, you know, the front line where the psoas is inhibited and, and the adductors take over the. You know, compensate for the psoas, which is not a good relationship, right? Poor little adductors are not supposed to, especially the pectineus, tiny little guy trying to do the work of the psoas, not pretty, right? <coughs> so that can cause a major adductor problem, but in this case, it crossed over, it was oblique. So how does that, how do those work together? What kind of, what kind of motion would do that, right? Remember he was saying he was lifting his knees to his chest? when he was rock climbing, right? Well, what if this starts pooping out? Then what, right? Then this could take over, right? And I kick the ball when it was tight. And then, and then you kick a ball, and this is already tight, and that's the end of it. I'm in the pectineus yeah. uh, brevis area here. This first thing I'm doing is seeing if it's gonna shake or not, okay? Mm -hmm. Arm, shoulder up, okay, and go. It's not shaking. It's not hurting. And it's not hurting in the groin. 